optimize your workouts, you may need to start with your diet. Is it low carb, low sugar, high protein? The choices can be confusing and we've heard them all. Well, celebrity fitness trainer Harley Pasternak joins us live now to share some fitness tips and to tell us how not to punish our bodies but still maximize our workouts. Good morning, Harley. Thanks for being here. Good morning. How Thanks are you? Thanks for having me. I'm great. Am I having a good hair day tonight or what? What do you think? I love it. It's easy, <laughs> right? Little, mine's a little you more know, difficult. I, 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 it's, it's, it's easy and you know when you wake up very early in the morning, there's a few things you need to worry about. If hair is not one of them, my life gets a lot easier. I just make sure that I get good quality protein. Don't skip breakfast to start my day and that's part of my message that I tell all of my clients. There's no amount of exercise in the world that you can do to make up for a poor diet and skipping breakfast is one of those and making sure that at every single meal, breakfast, lunch and dinner and a couple snacks throughout the day, you've got quality protein. Okay, protein is very important. Now, how about, to, how about when it comes to timing what we eat? What should we eat before? How soon should we eat before we work out? How about after? Do we need to eat something you know, or, or wait a few minutes? What about that? So focus on um, more so when you should eat throughout the day and then where do you put your workout in as opposed to where do I eat around my workout. Unless you're an Olympic athlete and you're training for four or five hours a day and you're totally depleting your body uh, of, of energy, um, then you need a pre-workout and a post-workout meal. But for those of us who just want to look great and feel great, it's more about eating every three hours. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, a snack between each. I, I have breakfast at seven, I have a snack at around 10, um, lunch at around one, snack at four, and then I have dinner around seven. 730 and every time I do that I've got protein fiber and healthy fat and I think where we have the pitfall is snack time and that's where people kind of get lost is they, they leave too much time between meals or blood sugar drops in the morning they grab a, a pastry or in the afternoon it's a chocolate bar or a bag of chips so make sure you have a healthy convenient snack that has a good source of natural protein whether it be a little Greek yogurt with some berries whether it be a bean dip like a hummus with some cut vegetables or um, uh, Oberto does some great all natural turkey jerkies and beef jerkies I'll have that with an apple um, really having quality protein as your snacks okay now how about some of the things we hear that are do's and don'ts like uh, don't eat a banana before your workout and chocolate milk is great to have after your workout is there any truth to any of that um, the only thing I would say is that just before your workout, you really don't want to have something that's going to upset your stomach. Things like raw vegetables and, and uh, beans. Healthy foods that are great to have at other times of the day aren't great just before you work out because they can upset your stomach. And as you exercise, all your blood gets diverted away from your stomach to your working muscles. And so it makes digestion a little more challenging. Post-workout, don't eat anything that's going to undo all of the work you just did. So if you just did that intense 45 minutes spin class and you leave the class hungry and you grab a fresh pressed apple juice that has three, four, five hundred calories of sugar and a low fat or a fat free scone that's got another five hundred calories uh, of basically of sugar in it, you've just undone everything you've done. So ask yourself, is it meal time? Is it snack time? And if so, um, have some protein and have some fiber. Okay, sounds good. So what is an absolute no-no when it comes to food and workouts? There is no such thing as an absolute no-no. I think life is too short. I love chocolate chip cookies. And, um, and that's part of my week. And I know that. And I understand that. And a couple of nights a week, I'll eat whatever I want. As long as I'm eating right the rest of the time, I'm snacking right, I'm exercising, I'm moving, um, then you'll be fine. I like your message. I think what I'm hearing is don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> you're, there's 35 times a week you're going to eat, right? And if you eat right 33 of those 35 times, you're way ahead of the game. Sounds good. Now, uh, something I wanted to touch on with you, you have trained a lot of celebrities. I think I, uh, I read Katy Perry, Lady Gaga. How is that training those celebrities? Are, mm -hmm. And are they really any different than us, normal people? The only way that celebrities are different than non-celebrities, I'm not going to say normal people because we're all normal people, <laughs> is they have more motivation. They have more to gain by looking phenomenal, right? Because they, their careers get better. Um, they're, they're always being photographed or videotaped, even going to the grocery store. And so they're always being scrutinized. So they really have extra motivation. And because they have extra motivation, they'll do whatever I say. 
it's the greatest things. Um, and whereas some of my other clients, they'll find a reason why, look, if someone's a lawyer or a school teacher, at the end of the day, whether they look five pounds lighter or five pounds heavier, it's really not gonna cost them their job. Um, sure, it makes life better, it makes them healthier, it makes them more confident, but when you are a celebrity and you're being photographed all the time, you have that added uh, incentive. All great information. Thanks for being with us today, Harley. Thank you so much for having me.